This is Down Home Sports, covering the best sports and student athletes in Ellis County. Brought to you by Pinnacle Bank, with ATM Live, powered by the people. Not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. The United States Marine Corps, the fighting spirit of an entire nation. Doe City Pizza and Burgers, for the best in artisan pizza and burgers, go to Doe City in Red Oak, Texas, across from the high school. It is delicious. With today's busy schedules, we need flexibility. Pinnacle Bank is the way banking should be. With ATM Live, powered by the people. They have hours that make it easy. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can just pull up to one of the easy to access ATMs where there's always someone live, friendly, and knowledgeable to help you. Pinnacle Bank, not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. Well, guess what else, Ken? We're joined one more time by the Middle Oakland High School Lady Panther basketball team. We got Hannah Hill. We got Bailey Davis. We got assistant coach Jeff Scales joining us here tonight. And, Coach, you know, we start, you started out the season. We had the girls on right before we got into tournament time. You go 12-8 and eight on the season thus far, 2-0 and oh in district. And, you know, just talk about, you know, you got a short bench this year. And how are the girls reacting from a coaching standpoint to – you know, playing those extra minutes that you aren't able to disperse out as, as normal. Well, we're definitely having kids that are having to step up and fill roles that have been left vacant by um, injuries and um, things like that. But overall, I mean, they've been doing a real good job of filling those, filling those voids. I know Hannah does a great job whenever um, she goes in and she takes care of um, – and she does a real good job of taking care of the ball. And that was one of the things that we were concerned about early on. Um, but her, she's been doing a great job, and everybody else has been just stepping up and taking care of their responsibilities as a team. So, And, Bailey, I mean, is there anybody on the team that can't drain a three? I mean, right before break, uh, that, first, that first quarter that you had – the first half, you were on fire from the three-point line. I think you were like five of six in the first half. Uh, just talk about that confidence going into things when everybody's – all those offensive weapons are firing on all cylinders. I mean, it gets us really fired up, but it all comes from lots of repetition. Like, we do a lot of shooting drills in practice, and I just always try my best to be prepared because when that moment comes in a game, like – I want to make the shot count for my team. So, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Well, Hannah, you know, watching you, it just seems like no matter where the ball is, you find your way to it when you're on the court. Uh, you know, you're amongst the trees down there rebounding, and you're coming out with the ball constantly. Just talk about that, that attitude that you're taking into the blocks to get those kind of rebounds and steals. Well, I'm a 5 through post, so, I mean, to compete with the trees, I really have to fight for it. And so the only thing that I do to get the rebounds is I always try to block out as much as I can, and that's how I feel like I come down with it a lot of the time. So. Okay. Well, did it hit, does it help having a brother that was a football player that you probably beat up on a little bit, you know? A little bit. I got it from my mom mostly, though. Oh, okay. We'll give mom the credit then, all right? Well, Coach, you know, you got a big game coming up tomorrow night uh, against Red Oak. That's always, you know, normally one of the games that's going to decide who might win the district championship there. But let's not focus on that right now. Let's just talk about what are you wanting to see from the girls this week coming back off of the holiday? You know, what, what do you what, – where do you – you don't want to have any drop-off or anything, I'm sure, from the amount of – the type of play y'all been going – but how do y'all keep from having that kind of drop off after such a long break? Well, mainly it just goes back to practice and how we go through practice and who does what in practice and how 
like their intensity and what happens um, throughout practice itself. And I mean, yeah, we're, we've got a big game tomorrow, but there's a, a lot of season left for us. And so we've just got to start putting together. Um, we've been playing some very good quarters, I think overall though, but um, we need to start putting to a little bit more together as far as a full game because we've had really good spots. Like, for example, the Ennis game that you mentioned earlier, we started off and 27 points in the first quarter, and then we struggled after that first quarter. So it's just we've got to put it together as a full game as opposed to just quarters at a time. Well, and Bailey, one of the things about pretty much the whole team is y'all are playing not worried about making a mistake. Um, it seems like, you know, that comes from confidence, like you mentioned before. But what is it like to have a coaching staff and teammates that allow you to go out and play your game? It's it's great. I mean, like, we know nobody's perfect. Mistakes are going to happen. But the thing about our team is, like, we have each other's backs. So we're going to get there if somebody messes up. And it's the effort after the mistake that counts. And the coaches do a really good job of, like, preparing us for all these situations. Awesome. Well, Hannah, you know, being a senior on the team this year, showing some of that senior leadership, what are y'all doing to get everybody to, you know, the buy-in has to be pretty good when you've only got an eight-woman bench. Everybody has to be willing to sacrifice a lot of stuff. So just talk about, you know, as, as a senior class, what are y'all doing as senior leadership to get everybody to buy in, to give those extra – hustle times, you know, running down those loose balls. I think it's just the whole idea of being a part of a team. It's not us stepping up and, you know, like, I don't know how to say this, like leading them just by talking. It's just kind of through action. And hopefully they notice our hustle and just our excitement whenever we're on the bench and just the whole idea of a team. Well, Coach, you know, a lot, a lot of district play is still to come right now. Uh, we haven't even made it to the turn yet. But what are some of the things that you think the girls have done well thus far? Uh, so far, I think really right now they're just um, – they're doing well as far as – they're growing as um, together as a team um, with certain individuals going down and um, being out. People sort of had to reshuffle roles and – um, we're learning how to play together. And I think that is really the best thing that they've done well. Um, but definitely there's always things to work on, especially at least in my head. But I think that they've done really well with that aspect as far as, uh, for example, uh, you have Elise who's going from what previously was our one of our post positions to now a guard position, our point guard position. And you've got Hannah and Hallie and um, those and those players that have to step up and they've been asked to sometimes play guard positions when they've been practicing most, most of the year as post in some form or fashion. So just really their, their growth as a team and in different positions is really what I'm thinking. Well, Hannah, you know, we, we've talked to Bailey before a little bit about this, but, you know, you, all, a lot of basketball teams are going to tell you, hey, our defense trans is actually our offense. I, I think that's the truth with y'all. Just talk about that defensive pressure that y'all been putting on because you've actually held a lot of teams to some of their lowest scores on the year. Um, I feel like as a team, our defense is really good. Um, intensity is one of the main things that we focus on during practice and during games. And I feel like we bring it a lot of the time during our defense. So, yeah, that's one of the things that I think we do really well. Okay. Well, Bailey, you know, with, you know, talking to Coach Hannah and them about all this and moving around, it just seems like the offense allows you all to be very fluid in positions. Is that, is that a bonus of just being able to have players of the caliber that you all have to be able to just rotate in and out? Because, I mean, one minute you're out top, next minute you're popping down low, then you're out on the side. Uh, you know, and you just sneak in there and grab a couple rebounds every once in a while. But does that allow you all to be more fluid in your offense and your offensive sets? Yes. Um, like Coach Scales was saying, like, we 
faced some adversity this season. So with players like stepping up in new roles, like Hannah playing post and guard, it's allowed us to like lean on each other more. And I feel like we've gelled better because people have to play new roles. So it just makes for a better execution on the court. Well, and Coach Scales, you know, when we're talking about this, when you're going four on four, is that a help as to as far as, you know, I know Coach Tennyson likes to run the court. She wants to run. Uh, but does that help with getting that that feeling during practice if you're going full court, going four on four, a little bit faster game, et cetera? It does. Um, a lot of times right now, especially, we've had to pull in our JV players and our JV team just to get five on five. But um, there are times that we will go four on four just simply for the action of, so we have varsity level going against varsity level, and it's not just necessarily going against the JV. Um, but there's definitely detriments to having the four and four. But, I mean, there's also positives to the whole thing. If you're getting all, all eight of the varsity players on at the same time, and they're actually going against varsity competition. And so that definitely helps. Well, and Hannah, as a senior representing the senior class, what, what do you think – the mark will be left that you're wanting to leave as a senior class on this program and on this year's team. Hopefully we go far in playoffs this year. Hopefully we make it all the way, but you know, um, go as far as we can go. And then just um, hopefully we leave something that's more than just a team. That's like, it, we're playing as a team and just as friends. And that's one of the things that I love about this team is we're not just a team in uh, inside of practice. We're friends outside of it. And so that really helps. And so I hope that continuing on, like they'll remain friends and we'll remain friends in the program. You know, the relationship is more. Well, and Maylee, you know, uh, just a year, two years ago now, uh, you had a school record set with charges. I mean, are you going to be setting a school record for three pointers made? <laughs> is I that mean, one of your goals this year? It is one of my goals. Uh, yes, it is. So hopefully, hopefully it'll happen. Well, uh, Scales is the number, guys. So Coach Scales, do you know what the – I think it's 18 three-pointers in a game. For a single – in, in a, a game. game? Wow. Yeah. And I thought Jerrica's eight in the Joshua game two years ago was a big deal. Yeah. Oh, it was. It had been a while. But, Bailey, you know, the other thing is, is when, you, when you're this close of a team – do, do y'all react to each other probably better that there's not as many people on the bench, you know, where you can just give a look to somebody and you know where they're cutting. Do you know people better on those, you know, little slide passes and stuff like that? Yes, because we are closer. Like we hang out outside of basketball and stuff and which makes us closer. So on the court, like we can read each other. And since there are less players, that means more playing time for people, which also allows us to see like how everyone plays on the court so we can just read each other. Awesome. And Hannah, I know you played all the way through NYBA there in Middle Othian, all the way up until now. I, I know you think, oh man, that's starting to age me right there a little bit. But just talk about being a senior player out there at the court and having little girls come out and watch y'all play. And what does that mean to you, knowing that you were that little kid that was playing in NYBA years ago, right? You were yeah. at the junior high level. Now you're at the high school level. What does that mean to, for you to be a, like a mentor out there to, you know, show young ladies what it's like to, to reach those kind of levels? It's definitely weird because I still feel like a little kid at heart. And it doesn't feel real that it's my last year playing. But it's it's kind of like my mom has kids in her class and then they'll come and watch sometimes. And it's like it's really cool, like because I remember being that young and going out to games and watching them and thinking I want to be I want to be playing like that one day. And now I've made it. So it's it's nice. Well, Coach Scales, you know, we, we always ask the coaches there's there's a reason why we ask certain players to come on at certain times. What would you have to say about these two young ladies and what they've meant to the program, not only this year, but in the past? Well, um, I've been with Hannah now. This is my fourth year at Midlothian. And I was with Hannah um, 
whenever she was a freshman under Coach Hutchinson and um, watched her grow the last couple of years under Coach Jackson. And she's always been a hard worker. She's always been a kid that we knew we could depend on. Um, she was committed and she was always that, that like, she was just solid. Um, and we, and no matter what we asked her to do, we knew that she was going to give us her best effort. And, and so it's really neat to just watch them grow from that freshman year. Now, the other knucklehead, um, I, I give her a hard time all the time anyway. Um, I've got so many nicknames for her. It's ridiculous. And I'm not going to say all of them right now because <laughs> she'll start turning red. Um, but uh, I had her and um, one of her other teammates, uh, Sheridan, whenever they were freshmen for the first half of the year, and they were killing it on the freshman level. And then we decided, hey, they're doing so well here. We're going to move them up to JV, the second half of her district to help with JV. They did that. And then Bailey came in at the, for our playoff run um, two years ago. And she, we put her in as a shooter. And one of the things we kept, I kept telling her over and over again was when it's your time, just be ready to go out and shoot because that's what you do. And um, just watching her growth from her freshman year to last year to this year, um, she's becoming a much more balanced player. It's not just necessarily the threat of the three now. Now she, there's also the threat of her driving and her defense has always been really good. So it's just enjoyable to watch them grow as, as players. And I know whenever Hannah, this is all over, um, she's going to do great things in college and beyond that. And the same thing for Bailey. So I, I just, it's just a joy to be with them and to work with them. Well, and folks, if you don't know this, Coach Scales also is an assistant coach for softball. So, ladies, if you don't remember this, a couple of years back, oh, he was in a great video, okay, on a TikTok to help out the softball team. So, my question to both of y'all is, what is your craziest Coach Scales moment? Because we know he'll almost do anything that y'all ask him to do. So, do y'all have a good story on Coach Scales? Hannah, let's start with you. Well, <laughs> we were – doing we're at, we're at this um thing for teen bonding and we're on this thing called the pillow <laughs> and it's like a trampoline and coach scales decided that he wanted to play the game with us and unfortunately he hurt his or i think he tore his acl i might be wrong but he just fell down and like i mean it's not that funny but yeah. <laughs> just like i that's like the most specific moment i remember because i was just like why is this old man like trying to jump around on his trampoline wow <laughs> Wow. I see, I okay. See Bailey, you want to take a little bit softer on that one? Wow. Hannah stole my story. I was going to say that story in a much nicer way, but <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we were like really well, scales getting on this pillow with us. And that happened. I know. I felt like, so if y'all think he's old. Let me tell you, I'm old. Okay. <laughs> so, but no, it, it just seems, you know, Coach Scales, I, I, I know that you're open and honest with the kids over there. Yeah. And, you know, you're very forthcoming. And, you know, you, you do make fun of yourself sometimes to, you know, make the kids smile. I know that. But, you know, ladies, I'll ask you this then, okay? What does it mean to have a coach that will put himself out there like that for you to make sure that, you know, you're buying in, that, you're, that it's not just the X's and O's, it's not just the drills, you know, what does that mean to you, Bailey? Um, it means a lot to me. Like like Coach Skell said, he's been with me since my freshman year, so I trust him. And, like, it makes me a better player on the court when I can actually talk to my coach, like, honestly, and just see what's all going on. It means a lot. What about you, Hannah? Yeah, it um, definitely makes us closer. Um, I like being comfortable and um, like him being goofy and whatever, it makes me feel more comfortable and like I can kind of, you know, relax a little bit. I don't have to be so stiff all the time. So that's nice. Like being able to be myself a little bit. Awesome. Well, coach, you know, we mentioned this a little bit before we got the game. Y'all got the game uh, Tuesday night, 630 tip over at Red Oak. Hard place to play. 
uh, big student section normally for every game. But let's talk about the next couple after that. What do y'all got going on Friday night and there and a little bit after? Uh, Friday night, we have Corsicana at home. Um, it's also going to be junior high night. So we're going to have all the kids from Dietrich and their coaches, and as well as Frank Seal at the game um, there against Corsicana. And then the following Tuesday, I believe we go to uh, Waco University, that, lo- that lovely trip down to Waco. And um, that's going to be a, a good, tough game because more than likely, I think um, Waco University is going to be in the mix for playoffs this year. Um, and then after that, I think that Friday, we finish out the first half of district uh, with Cleburne at home. Awesome. So. Well, folks, whatever you do, follow these young ladies. It's great watch if you go out and watch the games. Tuesday night is going to be a battle. It always is. When these two teams, when Red Oak and Midlothian get together, it doesn't matter who's what, what the rankings are. It's always a fun match to watch. So get out there and watch them. Ladies, coach, thank you all for joining us here tonight. And we'll hopefully see you on down the road, okay? Do you know the difference? Well, the best benefit in having true benefits is the fact that they're easy. You can get a hold of them. It's not two days later, a week later, I can make a phone call. If they don't have the answer, they'll get us the answer within 24 hours. He came to the office and interviewed all of our girls and did a presentation, told them what they were offering, and the girls were able to decide what they needed. They came in and gave us options, both for our company and our employees, that were affordable and beneficial for all. No matter the size of your business or your employees' needs, True Texas Benefits is the partner for you. Because Ellis County knows the difference. True Texas Benefits for all your benefits needs. Hey, Ellis County, guess what? We're joined by the one and the only, Megan Denny White, professional, collegiate. She's done everything in softball you could ever imagine, but the most important job that she has that I personally know is being a mom. So, Megan, glad to have you here. I know you're still giving back to the youth in our community of the softball fields, not only with pitching lessons and everything else, but other than the sport, because we've kind of talked about that before, what are some of the things you want these young athletes to learn from their time being around you? Okay, so my main thing that I kind of of base my whole coaching philosophy on is – Uh, when you walk into my bullpen or, you know, on my field, I want you to understand that you don't have to do any of this. (laughs) You get to do this. Um, And coming onto the field or in the bullpen with a grateful heart uh, will get you on the right track for sure uh, to be the best competitor you can be because you're now playing for a purpose and you're not, you know, just out there just to do something. Um, And when you're that disconnected, to what you're doing, you're just not going to see the success, you know, and, and uh, that's what athletes want to see. They want to see the success from all their hard work. Right. Um, So, but yeah, you're definitely not going to see it if you're, if you're completely disconnected to your why. Um, So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today because every single girl, I feel like that walks into my bullpen, um, especially especially all the new ones are like, I want to build more confidence in the circle, you know, and anytime I go and I speak to teams or um, just, you know, any type of group of teenage girls, it's like, I always want to ask them, I want to get to know, like, what is your biggest challenge? What would you say you are the weakest at and what you need to, you know, enhance as far as like your game goes? And I'm telling you every single one of them say confidence. Confidence is their number one issue. And so, well, this is the, uh, this is what I have to say about that. Uh, I think your, I think the foundation that your confidence sits on is your preparation, right? Your preparation for whatever it is that you're doing. I mean, I know um, some people besides softball peeps are probably listening in. I mean, this goes with any sport, any, uh, uh, any extracurricular activity, you know, theater, band, dance, uh, cheerleading, um, 4-H, 
uh, you're going to be more confident the more you prepare. Um, and you know, I said the word connect connection a minute ago and disconnection, like even in your preparation, you have to be fully connected, uh, and zoned in to, to what it is that you're actually preparing for so that your preparation is at the highest top level possible. Right. And you guys have heard, I mean, everyone's heard the saying before, you know, you play like you practice. Yep. Or, yeah. I mean, absolutely. You know, it, no true words were spoken than that, you know? So, um, but to get connected and to be really involved and, you know, really zoned into what you're doing and prepare properly. Um, I think, I think you have to have your, you know, a purpose for what you're doing this for. And that should always, you should, and I'm going right back to what I said at the very beginning. You don't have to do any of this. You get to, you get to, and if we're grateful and thankful for that, it's going to help you be more engaged and more connected to what you're doing and more motivated, wow. right? A lot more motivated to be the best you can be at whatever it is that you're doing, you know, and, and prepare proper. Um, <clears throat> also, I mean, every single week, these kids are in the classroom, right? And they've got tests, what, like every Friday, every other Friday. If you don't study for the test, you're not gonna be real confident going in, are you? <laughs> no. Ah! <laughs> if you study like really hard the night before, you might have a little bit better feeling about life, but Still, if you know that you prepared well and you, you know, studied hard and you did everything you possibly could, you're going to feel pretty confident going into the test, just like you would going into a game, <clears throat> right? If you practice two, like one, two days a week, I wouldn't feel really good about you go <laughs> going into the game over the weekend. You know, I can see how you wouldn't feel very confident about it either, you know? So, I mean, it's uh, preparation, just have good, strong, connected, engaged, purposeful preparation for what it is that you're doing. And you will see that, you know, confidence is going to come a little bit more natural to you. <laughs> you well, know? And, and does, does that, in the environment that we live in nowadays, right, with people that are playing on select teams moving back and forth, you know, I, I know you stay with a team for a long time. Okay, there's a lot of girls out there that do. Does that sometimes hurt that that being able to open your heart as much, you know, like if you're working out with the team or playing with the team, to give yourself over to what's being taught at that moment? And, you know, I always say this to anybody I know that wants to pitch. You know, there are very few pitchers out there in softball that only had one pitching coach. You know, mm -hmm. normally you have somebody that kicks you off, somebody else that you learn for, and you kind of make things your own. Is that right. is the environment that we live in kind of limiting that ability to connect sometimes and open our hearts to and our and our ears to other suggestions? Possibly, but you know, Tater, I feel like that's been that's that's been an issue since the beginning of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think the way that people handle that nowadays is different. Nothing okay. has changed in that sense, in my opinion, like there's going to be coaches who have absolutely no clue what they're doing that think they have it all together. There's going to be coaches out there that are doing it all for them, right. For their glory and their game. Um, and there's going to be coaches out there that are just those scream, holler, yellow, yell at you kind of degrading kind of, but that's not changed. It's the way we've, we handle it is what has changed. Um, just because I had the success I had, it does not mean that I did not endure all of what you just talked about, yeah. you know, uh, but here's the thing. This is something that I have that not everybody does only to select few really have this. And that is true love for what you're doing, right? If you do not love what you're doing, right. You're not going to endure all that. It, it, you're going to be like, forget this. I'm out, you know, but <clears throat> no, I, um, uh, God, have you ever loved anything that much? You know, I guess. That you, uh, well, uh, your life, for example, let's go there. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with, with my, with my husband, you know, like, you know, there's things that, you know, every single person doesn't, you know, love about their spouse. Right. But you love them. Okay. Yes. And love should not just be thrown around like a punchline, you know, and people need to truly understand what that is. And, you know, the things that, you know, not just myself, but other, you know, top, top level athletes or, you know, anybody who's successful in whatever field they're in, right. It's, it's that love for what they're doing. I don't care 
how bad a coach is. I don't care how bad umpires are. I don't care how mean teammates are. I don't care what hecklers say in the stands. I don't care what happens to me. I freaking love this. I'm not going to let all of that ruin something that I love. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I I think the way we're handling it nowadays is completely different where um, I I just, I don't think that, well, I think everybody would agree with me here. Like, I don't think this generation uh, is, is um, willing, I guess, to, or, or maybe they don't have the knowledge of how to persevere and how to handle adversity and how to, you know, just, charge charge through the storm and through it all you know they might be motivated and they might have that motivation to do it but they don't know how you know what I mean it's like it's like nowadays it's like it's just okay just to give up it's okay just to quit um I, I just can't relate to that I can't relate to that kind of I just no matter how bad things got quitting was ne- just never crossed my mind ever. (laughs) It never crossed my mind. Like not even one second. It was always, I was always just trying to figure out how to move forward, how to handle, how to deal, you know, cause there was no way I was going to stop doing what I love because somebody was trying to tear me down or somebody wasn't doing it right. Or, you know, uh, it's just like, figure it out, (laughs) figure it out. And one one way, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. My my screen punched. No, it's okay. Uh, and, You've heard the say and fake it till you make it type of thing. Yeah. Garbage. That's absolute garbage. Face it. Face it. Don't fake nothing. Don't fake nothing. You get up there and you face it. Right. And you'll have dignity. You will have self-respect. You will gain more confidence. <laughs> right. You will, you will feel powerful. You know? Um, I mean, is it hard? Yeah, sure. Sure, it's hard, but y'all, but anything that's worth having is not, I mean, is, is hard, you know, like we can't be afraid of the hard. You got to kick the hard's butt, <laughs> you know? But I would just ask, you know, like when, when we talk about this, you know, you, you have these young ladies out there and we're just talking softball right now. I can fly to anything, quarterback, running back, whatever it may be. But just mm-hmm. to talk in the framework of softball right now, you know, you have some of these ladies out there that are, Man, they're fastball and a changeup, and they could rule a game. But mm-hmm. people get yep. in their heads that they have to learn to throw this, or they got to learn to throw this. Is it right, not right. better to go from a perspective of being able to do what you're really good at and become excellent at that to build that confidence up in the first place? For sure, strengthen your strengths first and foremost. First priority: strengthen your strengths. If you do that, right, and if that's how you navigate through your preparation and that is, you know, kind of like the mindset you have going in, first of all, your strengths will get stronger and you will notice that things that you're not as strong at or I I don't like to call them weaknesses. I just don't like that. Um, It's just a negative way of thinking for me. Uh, Things that you need to be a little bit that that are just more supportive to the strengths. um, They kind of magically get better on their own. You know, it took me 20 years to figure that out. It took me a long time to figure that out. You know, I went about it the wrong way for so long, like so much wasted time, you know. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I hope that I hope that that answered your question. And, you know, as soon as your strengths do get stronger and you do gain that confidence and you do kind of uh, your, your supportive areas do start to strengthen themselves a little bit. That's when we can be a little bit more brave and kind of go out on a limb and learn something new, you know? Yeah, totally. No. And, you know, just, I mean, there, there's so many things that go along with this because I mean, when you're talking about a sport like baseball, okay, baseball, softball, either one, you know, it's limiting failure is all you're really looking at is minimizing the amount of failures that you have. And I've always thought that we kind of go out around with the wrong attitude sometimes, especially towards pitching, you know, to where it's you've got to strike them out. No, put the ball in play, okay? So a good pitch, get her off by – him or her off by an eighth of an inch and let your infielder, let your outfielder score. Can you talk about just having that faith in the rest of your team to build your own confidence that they're going to be well, able to support you? 
Well, I mean, I get, I get sometimes not having faith in your team, but right. Because there's sometimes where your teammates are just, they're not into it, right. They're not engaged. No. They're not connected. You know, they're not giving forth that effort and their mindset is completely different than yours, you know? And, and, uh, I mean, but, but still, if you start to try to take it all on yourself, you're going to realize that that's actually never a good idea. It always leads to something worse. Right. And if you just focus on doing your job to the best of your ability, which is what you said a second ago for pitchers, right? In particular, our job is to make it very hard for the hitter to hit the ball. If you strike him out, cool. That's a bonus. Bonus, right? If you make it hard for them to hit, then you will be making it easier on your defense, right? And you know what? If for some reason that one of your, you know, girls behind you, you know, kind of has her head up her butt that day, that's not your problem, (laughs) That's right. not your problem. And that, so that's what my I try to teach my pitchers. Like, it's not your problem. You know what I'm saying? You did your job. You did the best you could. She didn't. You know what? Show her some grace. Show her some grace. She's. You, you don't know what's going on with her right now. All you need to do is set a good example, right? And do the best you can at your job. You need to be vocal. You need to be supportive. You need to be encouraging, right? No matter how frustrated you are, right? It, there, you, you have to be, you're a leader. You are the leader on the field. If you don't like that, you don't need to be a pitcher. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. You know what I'm saying? Those, that's the responsibilities that come with that role in the circle. Um, so that I think, I think if you go at it like that, you know, like, Hey, that's not my problem, but Hey, you know what? You got it. That's cool. I'm going to keep doing my job to make it easy on you. Let's work together. Let's go. Right. And if she just doesn't get it for that day, like your uh the defense, if they just don't get it that day, they don't get it. It's not your problem. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it, right? You've got to control absolutely the only thing that you can control. And that is what you're focused on, your attitude and your efforts. That's well, it. And is that not the common thread among once you start seeing people, you know, in the in the higher levels of play, no matter what sport it is, right? Is is confidence not the number one thing? that aligns every one of them? Number one, number one, absolutely. That's why I wanted to talk about it today, right? <laughs> it's yeah. because I feel like that is absolutely the number, what I would say the number one issue with any athlete, right? Is just lack of confidence or feel, uh, fear of failure, you know? It just consumes them, you know? And it's like, and I, another thing I tell my pitchers all the time, don't be afraid to make a mistake. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you're not Jesus Christ. You're a human. You're going to make them, right? You're going to make them. So another thing that I spent way too much time on in the bullpen is trying to avoid mistakes or fix mistakes when I should have been focusing on just what I need to do, what I need to do and do the best I can at it and trust my mistakes. It's a hard thing to do. Because you're, because like I said, you're going to make them. It's unavoidable. So don't work your butt off on something that you know you cannot avoid. Let's embrace it and let's make, hey, and if we do make a mistake, you, being able to trust your mistakes, it just means that, you know, you, uh, you have to, for, it, it just shouldn't even be in your mind. It shouldn't be uh, worried and, uh, and, and, and just trying to avoid mistakes should not even cross the mindset of an athlete. You know what I mean? Cause, cause that's when you actually make more, <laughs> you make more mistakes that way, you know? So by embracing the mistakes, understanding that you're going to make them, you can give yourself your best shot at making the best mistake you possibly can. And let me tell you right now, how many mistakes I made that actually won big counts for me, big outs for me so many times. I mean, a rise ball didn't rise it curved instead, <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes God bless me. They dropped. Yeah. Okay. And they just came in the zone and just dropped. Did the complete opposite thing they were supposed to do, but yeah. you know why I still won my presence. My presence was strong and confident and trusting in myself, knowing that I prepared well enough that I per- trust even my mistakes because my mistakes are still good enough to beat you. Booyah. <laughs> There you, you know, go. Oh, I'm, ready, I'm ready to go pitch right now. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure Cliff will get the glove out and sit on a bucket for you. So, but heck no, Are you kidding me? No. Oh, well, he that's the first time I ever met y'all. 
he won't even let me throw underhand to him anymore. I have to throw oh. underhand. That's the rules. <laughs> oh, he's he's getting wimpy over there. Let me tell you. <laughs> but no, and you know, I've had the honor to to sit back and listen to you talk to a group of young ladies before, and about pitching, and these these, these were kids that weren't, you know, these were pee wee kids, you know, five u six u. You were helping get a league started with pitching, trying to get us vaulted up to start playing a little bit better ball around uh, the area. But the one thing that I, I'm probably sure that, that this speech has changed over the years, but you focused on the word attack that day. Yeah, it hasn't changed. Okay. You were <laughs> talking. How much does being an athlete or just being a general person and attacking life versus being passive make you that much of a better person? to your friends, to your family, everything out there. You're just going to miss out on so much if you don't go for it. You know, if you don't get out there and make the mistakes, you're not going to know that it's that this is wrong or that is right. Like you got to, you got to go for it and attack, you know, because um, our experiences, right. That we experience that our life create who we are, right. It strengthens our soul. Right. So, I mean, but if we are passive and, you know, are not on the attack, always on the defense, you're not going to learn, you're not going to grow, you know, and you're not going to, you're just going to miss out on so much of the best parts of life, you know, or the sport or whatever it is you're doing, you know? So I tell my girls, it's like, if you try to avoid the mistake and you're scared of failure, you're going to miss the best parts of your pitch, like a drop and rise ball that strikes oh. someone out on ESPN and it makes her look stupid when I just made the biggest mistake ever. You know what hey. I'm saying? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I've always told girls that I've worked with in the past, there is no such thing as a perfect pitch. No. Okay. Because no, because one person, I always use Pudge Rodriguez as an example. If you do it outside the zone, Pudge would take it to the yard. If you do it right down the middle, he couldn't touch the time. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, but, you know, just talk about, you know, the big thing with me about you is, is just the positivity that you bring to a field, to a team. You know, um, anytime I've ever seen you talking to young athletes, where did that come from? What, what coach inspired you to take that, that modus operandi right there and go forward? Uh, well, I mean, I have to give all a lot of that credit to my pitching coach <laughs> all whenever I was growing up. Um, he, that man still coaches me to this day. I still call him all the time, you know, um, have, having him coach me through life and coach me through the coaching life. Um, no, he was he, he was like that with me. He's he just was like, oh, hell, just throw the damn ball, you know, top of good old boy. <laughs> you know, and it just made me relax and it made me feel much better, you know, about just going for it, you know, just going for it and, you know, just learn as you go and just take the adventure and find the joy in the journey. He's the one that kind of gave me that, you know, very confident, aggressive mentality, but also, um, my, my idol and I guess softball hero, Lisa Fernandez is the goat, not just at softball, but at this, this idea of how to play, right. She was just a bulldog bulldog. You know, I mean, there was no fear of failure in her eyes ever. You know, she was just the most, um, aggressive and confident and powerful, powerful with a capital P, you know, I mean, it just radiated out of the circle when she was, in, when she was in there, you know, um, and me wanting to be just like her, you know, mimicking her every move, and just taking her every word as it was just pure gold uh, also kind of set that mentality for me at an early age and wanted to be, wanted to be like that, <laughs> like the goat. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, you know, one thing I, I find that's kind of funny is, is, you know, I, I think some of this, especially in women's sports, it comes down to somewhat body issues. Like mm -hmm. somebody might say, well, I'm not as tall as her, so I can't pitch that well. Or I'm not as tall as her, so I'm not going to be a great point guard or a basketball player. We, we take these things, we, we say they can't do these, but then we see different people that come out and do all these amazing things. Yeah. And, we're all, and we're all just amazed. And is it not just the confidence about your, your own personal self 
and taking what what you've been given naturally and just taking those things and just running with them. 100%. 100%. Now, all of what you mentioned is nonsense. I mean, it's just absolute nonsense, right? Like when I, when I was uh, in college, I was the favorite to get, you know, freshman of the year and, you know, of the big 12 and all this and that. Well, guess who actually got it? The little five, five girl from Texas A&M, you know, that wasn't the favorite to do anything, but you know what? She said, you know what? My name's Amanda, hear me roar, you know? And that's exactly what she did. It's the mindset. It is the mindset. It's all about how you feel about yourself, you know? Um, and, and you, you alone are going to be the only person that is going to either destroy you or empower you. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is, it, when it comes down to a choice, you know, and I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're one of the best athletes, one of the worst athletes, biggest athlete, littlest athlete, you're going to have, people are going to come at you with something all the time. You know, oh, well, you know, you might throw hard, but you can't control it or you're too little and you'll never, you know, like be a point guard, (laughs) you know, who's that little bitty guy from the NBA? You know who I'm talking about? One of the older guys, like from the nineties, that little bitty guy. Oh, he's in space Jam. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know his name, but look how little that guy was, but he was a baller. He was a baller because he knew he could be and he thought he could be. And let me tell you, so everyone who knows me, it's not a secret that I am a woman of God. I'm very, I'm just very, very true to my faith. And um, I think that all of that, the, all the feelings that you're feeling, right? All the feels like I, you know what, I, I am five, five, but I want to throw the ball 70 miles an hour, right? So many people, (laughs) the devil's going to get into so many people's words and say, oh, well, you're too little. You'll never do that. Blah, 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 blah. Right. But (laughs) have I seen it happen? Sure have. I Mm -hmm. sure have. But that is that feeling that you're feeling that very ambitious, right? Almost what seems impossible feeling and aspiration. That is God calling you. He is calling you to a challenge. (laughs) That's what he's doing. And like I just said, you don't have to do any of it. You get to. So with a grateful heart and knowing that he is like pretty much qualifying the called here with, you know, going through all this journey. I mean, how could you not be confident in the one who created you in his own image, who has a purpose for you? Why on God's green earth would we not Trust that right there. Why? Well, and, and you know, I read some. Well, I read something a long time ago, and I want to get your take on this as well because I think this segments into it. Is when we when we when we feel bad about ourselves, we don't look in a mirror. We will not look in a mirror whatsoever. We'll avoid it. Okay. Yep. So I used to tell some people I worked with some was write three things in a mirror, read them to yourself every day while you're brushing your teeth. When you achieve them, take them off. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it about? Conquering yourself, you know, and I think that's where confidence comes from is basically conquer, um, excuse me here, um, conquering yourself, conquering that ego in your head that says, I'm not good enough. I'm not this. How do you explain to young athletes how to conquer that their selves? You have to practice it every day. You know what I'm saying? Like you just said, like right in the mirror so that you're seeing it every day. Right. And what did I say at the very beginning? Preparation right? Preparation is your foundation for confidence. You know what I'm saying? That's that those kind of things have to be practiced. So uh, pos- that positive self-talk has to be practiced every day, right? And, and as Christians, we need to be in our Bible every day, right? And gaining all of that strength and wisdom from the directly from the word of the person who has created you for this purpose and who has called you to for, for this purpose, right? So it, it's just, it, it's gotta be a constant everyday practice. And with my pitchers, like we don't just get in the bullpen and work on spin and explosive drive drills. And no, we, we do do that. But what else that we do is pitch sequence. Like how, like how can I use all my pitches as a unit, right? How can I use them in a sequence, you know, to, for a certain purpose to get ahead, stay ahead, ultimately win the count. And it takes a lot of mental preparation, right? And so with the more that you do that, the more knowledge you're going to gain of your own self and your own pitches, you know what I'm saying? So, and the more you expose yourself to that on a daily basis, 
the more comfortable you're going to be in your own skin and the more confident you're going to start getting in your abilities. It's got to be a daily, a daily preparation. Well, there are five things. I'm just, I'm going to say five. You might have 10. Okay. That okay. when you're dealing with an athlete that you say, these are the, the five to 10 things that I need you to check off. Okay. You know, like I'm just saying to the effect of you want, you have to want to be here, you know, right. those types of things. Uh, you know, you're willing to the commitment to, to go th through with all of it. Are there, yep. are there those five, 10 things that are like non-negotiable to reach your peak as an athlete? Sure. And as a person. So, so first of all, your, your why, right? Why are you doing this? Yeah. Right. So we, got, we got to start there. Okay. Know what your why is. Number one. Number two, get connected, Right get fully connected. And what I mean by that is like, create, get, get some knowledge, right? Knowledge on what it is that you need to do to, you know, tend to your why every day. Okay. So just knowledge, knowing, knowing what is right, knowing what is wrong. Um, and then, and then uh, third, I'm going to go with commitment, right? You've got to commit to what you're doing. You've got to commit to the why, right? And you have to commit to all the things that, you know, that go along with getting connected to the why and getting connected to, you know, the, uh, the, or, or just getting connected to the, like the preparation, right? So for example, being committed to, to all of this, there's things that I had to do, right? I was so committed to my why that, um, every day I was doing something in the bullpen to get better. I didn't take days off. I didn't do it. No. Right. Uh, maybe. Okay. Maybe here and there when my body felt like a, a train ran over it, sure. I, I wouldn't do any pitching that day. You know, it was all like rehab and recover stuff, but, uh, but, but, but again, that is stuff that you have to do to prepare, right. Is that rehab and that recovery? There's things you have to do. Like you got to see the chiropractor. You have to go see your trainer on a daily basis. You have to make sure that you're getting up and you're, you know, doing some sort of cardio. You're doing some sort of weight training to strengthen your muscles. You have to do, make sure that you're also doing some kind of flexibility routine to keep your body flexible as you're lifting, uh, lifting it up with all these weights and conditioning, right. And bullpen sessions. Okay. And then you also have to make sure that you are being smart about your recoveries. Make sure you're doing your ice baths, make sure that you're doing uh, your massage therapy, make sure that you're doing your resistance band training, you know, make sure that you are, um, just constantly, you know, mind is on something on how you can get better and how you can tend to your why, and that it's going to keep you connected. And this commitment, right. Is going to absolutely start building and building and building that confidence that we're talking about. Right. And then I'm going to go with the last thing. I think that's only four. Right. But, but these are the main things for me, right. Why? get connected, get committed, perform, perform, <laughs> get out there and do the dang thing. You know what I mean? Be aggressive and attack and go right out, trust your preparation and perform, perform hard every time. And I just don't see why there'd be a reason not to trust yourself. Yeah. Wouldn't be a reason why not to be confident, <laughs> you know, if that's, if that's what you're, um, you know, mentally connected and committed to, you know, and physically preparing for, you know, and uh, is, is your why, why you're doing it all. Well, and it's just like for me, right. I want to be a broadcaster. So I read a lot about Marty and them back in yeah. the thirties and forties and what they did to prepare for doing a game and stuff. Now, do you think that mental aspect of the game that you focused on so hard, do you think that's kind of getting put to the side now? I mean, I, I know you talk – what's what what's the thing that would get that back into play for people other than just communication like this? I just think people just want results all the time, you know? They just – everybody wants to be good. Everybody wants, you know, to be this or that or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But – the, but the preparation that we're talking about, like, that's, that's not what it's all about. <laughs> that's not what it's all about. And these, these kids that are not getting like fully connected and commitment committed to their why, and they're just out there working and working and working and working and not seeing those results, you know, I mean, those are the ones that are, that are feeling that defeat and that failure, you know, and they're like, forget this. I ain't got time for all that. Right. 
So I think it's just the lack of, you know, engagement and connection and commitment <laughs> to your why, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think everybody needs to absolutely know what their why is. Set those goals. What are your aspirations? What do you, I mean, what is it that you're doing this for? You have to write it out. I mean, I, I wrote it on everything. I wrote it on my glove. I wrote it in my locker room. I wrote it, you know, on my notebook. I wrote my why all the time. It was constantly always. And sometimes my why was not the right thing, you know, yeah. um, like my, like a lot of the time, my why was I want to be the best. Mm -hmm. I want to be the absolute best, right? I want to be an all American. I want to be a national champion. I want to be a gold medalist. <laughs> you know, I want to be all these things. I want to be big 12 pitcher of the year, you know? Um, and I'll just go ahead and tell you all right now. I didn't get any of that. Yeah. All of that preparation, all of that commitment, all of the sacrifices, I didn't get any of it. None of it. Um, and it haunted me for years, for years. <laughs> I was like, what? And I, and I, I did what you were absolutely not supposed to do. I questioned God. I'm like, why, why would you make all of this wonderful things happen to me in high school and select ball and me get a full scholarship, you know, and get to go play with team USA in, in high school. Like why do all that for me to get to college and like just ruin it all. I didn't ruin nothing. I still did amazing in college, but back then you could not have convinced me of that. You couldn't yeah. convince me of that because I didn't get all American. <laughs> I didn't get big 12 picture of the year. I didn't get freshman of the year. Like I wanted, I mean, I didn't. And then in 2008, they pulled the plug on softball. So bam, there went that. And that was my why yeah. ever since I was nine years old. That was my why at all. Like I just wanted to, I wanted to be a gold medalist more than anything. And when that was stripped away from me, you know, I, it did not break my heart. It shattered it shattered. And so, and then, and then, you know, when college came to an end and, uh, my last game I ever pitched was at regionals and, um, I didn't get out. I think I, I think they pulled me in like the first inning. I don't think I got out of the first inning. Um, my last pitch was a changeup, which is my worst pitch, which I mean, I'll, this is probably another, another, uh, like conversation to have. Um, I should never have thrown a changeup. Yeah. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I never should have had a changeup. I didn't need one, but again, that's for another day. <laughs> a yeah. lot of controversy come after, after me saying that, but I have a really good explanation as to why, but whatever. Um, but that's how I ended my college career. I don't think that ball has landed yet. <laughs> that girl from Washington hit that change up so hard. I honest to God, it's traveling in space somewhere. It okay. hasn't landed. It's um, in orbit. You but, know, yeah. get, and then, and then after, after all that, I sat in the locker room and Tater, I didn't talk, I think for two days, it was probably two days. I didn't say, I didn't say anything because I just, I was drained, you know, cup, not cup, not half full, not half empty cup, empty. <laughs> you know, I got you. Cup empty. And, um, well, and then I was like, I think it was like two weeks after that, I did get phone calls from both pro leagues and, you know, wanted me to come yeah. and play. And, uh, and that's when I realized I was like. I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. I should have never questioned you. I should have known you had a purpose much greater for me than I could ever have had for myself. And uh, come to think of it, I didn't need any of that crap that I just mentioned. I did not need any of it to have the life that I have now. He, it, he had my back from day one. And the fact that I put a question mark where he put a period, no good. No, well, I think I got off track from, from the original question. No, but, it's fine. It's uh, fine. But, oh, I, I but, but taking all that. My, yeah, I was talking yeah. about my why, how my yeah. whys were not the right whys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They were not for the right things. Uh, my why from the very beginning should have been, this was a gift that I was given. I was given this gift. I did not earn it. I did not deserve nothing. I was given it by the, by our loving and gracious God, because he had a beautiful purpose for me. And when I went astray, yes, I was miserable. I was depressed. I didn't do well. Right. I was empty, right. Completely empty. And then whenever I decided and finally dawned on me and realized that my why from the very beginning should have been to glorify him and his wonderful gift and all that he is that good and holy should have been in his name, not mine. And as soon as that happened to me, not only did I become the best pitcher I ever was in my career, 
right? But I became the woman I wanted to be, a woman I was proud of, a woman who I fell in love with, fell in complete love with who I was. And they're in, talk about confidence, man. <laughs> I mean, come at me, come at hey. me. Well, you know, you talked about a few of these are negative things you mentioned a minute ago, but talk about that fourth, fifth day after, maybe two weeks after, maybe a year. When you start to look back at those things now, is it, you know, you've got these relationships that you built. You've got all these things that you learned over that time. And yeah, with, you know, coming with age, you get that wisdom from seeing everything that happened and taking it forward, you know. Is that probably, to me, it seems like that's one of the most important things that you do at the camps and things you go to is try to impart that wisdom to younger people yeah. so they can keep that aspect and not have those lowest of lows, but always, yeah. you know, remain that high. Yeah. The, and you know what? Um, and, and, and for these kids, right, to understand that all of the negative and all of the defeat and all of the, all of those negatives that we just, it has to happen. It has to happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if it, if it doesn't, then something else will not, you know what I'm saying? He's always preparing you for something else bigger and better. Right. So, uh, I was going through some struggles this, this year, actually, um, uh, in September that were big that I'm, that I look back now and it's like, okay, all of 2020 was supposed to prepare me for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And here we go, you know, and it was, it didn't make it easy and it didn't make it, you know, desirable, but it, it just made me see how everything was connected how they were constantly being prepared for something else. So that's what I wish I would have understood in college. Like all of this is happening because it's supposed to happen. That's what the, these kids don't get. You know what I'm saying? They don't get, they think that if they just do all the right things and work hard and this and that, like it should all work itself out. Okay. It will maybe not in the way that you think, and maybe not in the time that you think, you know what I mean? So just goes back to, you know, persevere, persevere, you know, face adversity and punch it in the freaking face, you know? Um, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I, don't know if I'm supposed to, I get fired up when I talk about I, this stuff. Hey, you're perfectly <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, yeah, just, just, just knowing before you go into, you know, any adventure that God's yeah. calling you to, whether it's softball, football, whatever, like so, some, some stuff's going to go down and it's supposed to, you are supposed to in, you know, <laughs> okay. So I love this story. Let me tell you the story yeah. uh, kind of relates to this, uh, my mom shared this one with me one time. Her boss shared it with her at work. It was a story about a buffalo and a cow. Okay. And, and this is how a buffalo and a cow react to a really bad storm, right? Like tornadoes, lightning, whatever, mm -hmm. like whatever. How, how they react to it. Well, the cow tucks tails and runs, right? Runs away from the storm. And so by doing that, he adds anxiety. He adds, you know, uh, just fear, right? And he adds just all of that unnecessary, um, you know, negativity, right to him, but the Buffalo, however, and this is absolutely true. The Buffalo run into the storm, right? They just run right in. And so therefore they actually, by doing that, they actually cut the time of fear and anxiety, you know, all the stuff. Right. And, um, and it's like, if we don't endure what we're supposed to endure, we're going to die spiritually we're going to die and cup cup is going to empty cup is going to empty right and and for the next challenge you will not be prepared because you did not let your heart be prepared for it you know what i'm saying so so therefore it just keeps adding to your plate of defeat right and fear no. and anxiety Oh, definitely. No. I mean, um, you know, one of the other things I'd ask you real quick, just kind of in this conversation on for tonight is, you know, what would be the, the one thing I, I, and I think this is great for you to come up with this stuff because you've played at some of the highest levels that you could play at in your career. And now you're helping coach your daughter's team, you know, and it's a bunch of little kids. Um, 
What are the similarities, if any? Okay, I just had this question for you. Well, what are the similarities, if any, of when you were playing at that highest level and those young ladies finding the love for the game again? Because it seems like to me, no, because it seems like to me when, when you finally reach those high levels, the mm-hmm. love for the game finally comes back. You have that yeah. little in-between part where you're like, this is a job. This is this. This is this, right? But right. when you finally hit, hit that top level and when you're a, a person playing a sport for the first time, there's got to be that commonality of this is the best time in the world. These ladies are great. These girls are great. You know, we're going to do this together. And right. talk about that for a second, about the confidence level that that brings, either not knowing, not knowing enough or knowing way too much. Right. So, so here's what me and my assistant decided uh, how to coach the team uh, uh, whenever we started coaching these little girls. And we're like, look, we're going to make, we're going to teach these girls how to play the game, how to play the game. We're not going to get the ball and play chase right? We're, we're, we're not going to do that, right? Yep. You get the ball, you field it cleanly, and you throw to first base, right? If there's a runner on first and you field the ball, you go and you throw it to second base. This girl needs to cover. We are teaching the girls how to play the game of softball early. Uh, now, we didn't win a lot. That was not the objective, right? Mm-hmm. That was not the objective. The objective was, or the objective is, Teach these kids how to play the game. Give them that game knowledge. And I'll be dang at the end of the season if those girls weren't playing some ball. There you know we go. What I'm saying? So, and so that's what we decided to do. If they, if they um, did the right things, whether if they did it bad or good or sloppy or perfect, like whatever, they will be celebrated for knowing what to do when they get the ball, right? Mm-hmm. And doing their absolute best to get it done right? They will be celebrated. And if you know anything about me, I celebrate. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. (laughs) I celebrate hard. Um, I'm very good. I I would say I'm very good about making people feel good about who they are. I'm good at that. Uh, because I, I know what it takes to feel good about yourself, you know? Um, and that is the key to anything is that confidence. It's the key to any kind of success. So, um, and I can tell you what them, knowing what to do and doing it like that was more of a victory for them than actually winning the whole game. Yeah. And that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Cause I'm telling you right now, when these, when my girls are in 10 U and they're the only ones out there that know how to play softball, they're going to start there. Oh, yeah. That's what, that's when they're going to start seeing the victories. And those are the kids I'm telling you right now, they're going to last all the way through all the way through because it wasn't all about winning but or else right at that age well and, you know and at that pro level though is it not about playing at a very high you know i mean you got to play pro ball that's pretty darn awesome right there but at at the pro level when you got a team that's just clicking and everything is just going is that not as good as those young ladies Dude, learning and having that moment you know And that's the way it should be. Everybody on the team has a role. They have a job, right? The shortstop's job is not to strike people out. Nope. (laughs) My job as a pitcher is not to make those wow triple plays. That's not my job. When every person knows what their role is, right? Connects. (laughs) Connects to what their role is. I'm following it. Commits to their role and performs hard. That uh, you're not even winning and losing is not even on your mind, right? Yeah. It's doing your job, 100% connected, committed, all right, and performing your best efforts. That's what, and it's and it's across the board on the team. That's when you win. That's when you win. That's when the wins come naturally, right? I'll tell you what. When people when you lose, but you feel like everybody's doing the right things. Everybody, like everybody feels like they're doing their own job and it, it's just kind of becomes a little bit more individualized like that. And you're not, yeah. you don't why you don't have like, you're not connected and committed and performing for the greater good of the team. You're co- connecting and committing and performing for your own self. When you have a team full of girls like that, I don't care what your stat. I mean, they can have the best stats in the whole league. You ain't going to win. Yeah. You ain't going to win. 
<laughs> I know Megan's r- r- written a book and stuff and got some stuff coming out. One of the best pitching coaches around the area, I can tell you that most definitely. Uh, but folks, follow her a little bit. Here's some of the things that she has to say, especially if you're a softball player and want to find out what it means to w- be where you want to be. She's been there. She's done it. She can give you some great life advice and also stuff in between the lines, and she'll get you there. Megan, thanks so much for tonight, and hopefully we can have you back on. Are you hungry for the best burgers, fries, and pizza in Ellis County? Well, stop by Doe City Pizza and Burgers, where the ingredients are fresh every day and stacked up just the way you like. Custom seasoned fries and burgers right off the grill on in-house fresh homemade buns. So head on down to Doe City Pizza and Burgers where everything there is delicious. Doe City Beats and Burgers is located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from Red Oak High School. Make sure you come down and have the best burgers and service in Ellis County. Hi folks, guess what? We are here with Drew Barnes right now, young wrestler in the county, and let me tell you what, he's tearing it up all the way across. Well, Drew, we're glad to have you back on. This is the second time you've been with us. And, you know, first off, you know, you had a great season last year and everything. So what were your goals coming into this year? Was it just to get better or was it put a couple more of those medals up on that wall back there? Um, well, I did. I do want to get better. And I, I wanted to I also want to be a Tulsa Nationals champ this year and a Reno Worlds champion this year. Pretty awesome, man. That's some high goals right there. Well, you know, most wrestlers, and we talked about this last time, and I know you're a little bit nervous, but most wrestlers have a specific move that they like to utilize, you know, like a Gramby roll and stuff like that. What is your favorite move to utilize? I'm like a leg rider and a crab rider, and a lot of people don't do that. So, um, and a lot of people don't know how to defend it. So that's, I mean, it does that, that you think that gives you a pretty good advantage? Mm-hmm. All right. And, uh, you know, this is the sport of wrestling is getting a little bit more popularity in the area. Um, you know, what are some of the things you've learned over the past couple of years that you would tell people about how technical and how fun wrestling can be? Wrestling's fun when you win. It's not that fun for when you lose. Um, so if you're willing to put in the work, um, you'll have a lot of fun winning. Awesome. And what do you do as a training routine? Um, I, uh, I practice five days a week. Um, three practices, I go to uh, Melissa with my uh, coach, Coach Pierce, and do that three practices a day. Um, the other two practices, I go to Midlothian and I uh, practice with a person named Johnny Hendricks. And I also work out on Sundays. Uh, for legs, I do squats and hang clean. For chest, I do a bench press and dips. And for back, I do a weighted pull-ups and bent rows. Oh. And I do shoulders. Dude, how many? How much you eat in a day? Mm. Are you like a never-ending? You know, you like buffets and stuff now, or are you just draining mom and dad out of the out of the kitchen? Do you eat a lot? Yeah. Okay, well, what's your favorite thing to eat? Uh, Chicken wings? Uh, I don't really know. Okay, just anything they can put in front of you, right? Well, you know, this takes a lot of energy. Most people don't get it, you know, no matter what size you are, because you're wrestling guys about your same size. So... When you're doing that and you put the, all that energy into that two minutes, do uh, you ever find yourself in a tournament where your mind is just so tired? Not necessarily your body because you're so well trained, but how do you keep your focus in those matches when it's going so fast? Um, well, my uh, coaches push me hard and my dad pushed me hard. So um, I'm used to 
um, having my uh, mind right. That's good. And uh, if I'm not wrong here, okay, you had three major tournaments in the past three months. You know, how did you get in – you know, we talked a little bit about the workout, but how do you stay in shape and recover when you have that many matches in such a short period of time? Well, uh, I do five practices a week, and um, I do uh, – before that USJOC tournament, uh, I did two practices. <clears throat> And um, oh, and at local tournaments, um, I did two divisions, my division and a division up, so I could get more matches. So I know you work really hard to stay at this level, right, right now. But when you, it seems like when you have fun, you have a lot of fun. So what are some of the things that you do to just have fun and recover? Uh, I play video games. There we go. Any favorite video game? Uh, Madden 22. There we go. There we go. So I saw that in the battle of the, of the belt uh, over in Kansas City, uh, you won by in the first round by pins, and then the finals won five to three, and, and then how tough that competition was. And what did you learn to propel you into those USJLC championships from that tournament? My first two matches were pretty easy, but the finals match was hard, and um, – and I was being coachable and learning and uh, using good technique. So um, that helped me win that battle for the belt and uh, winning JFC. Well, how did it feel to win the U.S. JFC? It felt good. Oh, good? Yeah. So does that – do you think that's got you prepared for Tulsa and the other tournaments? Mm -hmm. yes. For the fifth finish out the year? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well – you know, one, one question I've got for you real quick is with all the time that you do this, you know, I also know that you've got good grades. So does it mean a lot to you to keep your grades up with your performance athletically as well? Yeah. Okay. And where do you want to go with this? Are you planning on a college career, going pro, Olympics? Maybe. Okay. Haven't thought about it yet? No. Okay. Well, who's your team that you wrestle with? Don't you wrestle with the team? Yeah. Called the Melissa Cardinals. Wrestling. Melissa Cardinals. Okay. And you want to give a shout out to some of your buddies on the team? Um, you got any buddies on the team that you're really close with? Yeah. Well, who are they? Uh, one kid is named Jackson Johnson. Um, uh, another one is Jaden Miller. Okay. And do y'all have a great time together at these events? Yes. Like rooting for each other? Yeah. Okay. And how great is it to sit there and see the people that you're working out with doing great things all the way around? Not – you know, you're winning championships and stuff, and I know these guys are giving it their all. How great is it to see all of y'all having such great success? It's, it's really good. Awesome. Well, i tell you what, Drew, I do appreciate it, man. And uh, we're, we're keeping our eye on you, seeing what's going to happen with you, because we know you're taking it all the way to the top. We won't wish you nothing but more than the best. In Ellis County, you know where to go for the best pizzas and burgers. Welcome to Dose City. How are you doing today, menu that allows you to have it just the way you like it. Great, friendly customer service. And all the toppings you can handle. So what do our customers say about Doe City? We come up here all the time. So we love the pizza and the burgers also. It's somewhere we can all come and have a good time with our friends and enjoy the good food that they have here. I love the fries. That it's um, put to order. So you're always going to get it fresh. Doe City is always a great place to come and hang out with your friends. Whether it's Tuesday or Friday night after a ball game in Ellis County, guess what? You can always make it over and have a little bit of delicious. It's delicious. Delicious. It's delicious. So come in or order out at Doe City Pizza and Burgers in Red Oak, Texas.